I want to start out by asking you this. What made you decide to watch this webinar today? What about the title did you connect with? Maybe it's because you have the drive to start farming, but you want to see the proof that others like you have made the leap successfully. Maybe you're intrigued by the idea of farming, but want to see why it would be better than what you're doing now. Maybe you know you want to start a farm, but you feel overwhelmed by the process and need to understand where to start and then what the heck to do after that. Or maybe you're here because you see an opportunity in the market to change something real in your community or the food system, but you want to know if it's possible to do that profitably and without all the typical struggles that you hear about in the industry. Whatever the reason, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to explore the key steps to starting your farm. We're going to talk about three upstart farmers who brought their farms from concept to real life, and then we're going to explore their situations a bit more. Okay, it's time to get excited because by the end of this, you'll understand why so many people are finally pursuing their dream to start a farm, and more importantly, the three steps for how you can do it too. But before we get going, I want to give you a heads up and let you know about a little bonus we have for you at the end. If you stick around until the end, we're going to hook you up with a killer deal and a great resource to help you be a successful hydroponic grower. All right, so let's get started and we'll kick it off with some quick introductions. I'm Hallie. And I'm Amy. And we both work on Upstart University, an e-learning platform for aspiring farmers. Now we both love the vision and the values and the reward that we find in this job, but I couldn't really say the same for previous jobs that I've had. And maybe that's you. You have a great job, you have good pay, you have nice coworkers and benefits, whatever that is. But you just don't go home satisfied at the end of the day. You don't get the excitement of the challenge. You don't have the feeling, uh, the feeling that you're doing something truly, truly significant. Before we start talking about these three steps to becoming a farmer, I need to provide a little disclaimer. Farming is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It can be very profitable, and in fact it should be, but that's not something that happens overnight. Now look, farming is a personal investment, and that makes the decision kind of scary. We know that. But now more than ever before, the resources exist to help you get there, and you can find confidence that there are real people doing it. And that's what we're going to show you today. So in this presentation, we're going to help you get things moving. We're going to walk you through the three steps to starting your farm. Number one, decide. Number two, learn. And number three, plan. These three steps are the steps that each of the following three farmers, Courtney, Gary, and Matt, took when starting their farms. All three of these farmers had different motives for starting a farm. This webinar should serve to inspire you, help you form a clear motive, show you that success really is possible, and give you the resources you need to execute on those three steps and start your farm. All right, now let's get to it. Okay. If you're still here, then you are a person that has that insatiable hunger to serve your community or rise to the challenge. So let us tell you about someone else, like you, who experienced that hunger and then what she did with it. It's time I introduce you to Courtney Edwards. And who is Courtney? Courtney is the co-owner, along with her partner Dan, at Blue Roots Farm. If you're someone who likes what you're doing now, but who knows you could be doing more, creating more, then you'll want to hear Courtney's story. Prior to quitting her job and becoming an upstart farmer, Courtney worked as a scientist, environmental consultant, and an educator focusing on marine resource management and sustainable aquaculture. Marine resource management. That doesn't really sound like a boring job. <laughs> exactly. The thing was, she liked what she was doing, but she grew frustrated in her position, and she felt powerless in her pursuits. Courtney recently talked to us about this experience, and she kindly allowed us to share it with you. My name is Courtney Edwards. I am one of the co-owners of Blue Roots Farm, and we are located on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada. So, essentially, I had built a career as an environmental consultant uh, working on the water, and I was working as someone that talked about problems and never put forward a solution. I built a career around studying the impacts of people uh, on the marine environment, like overfishing and fish farming, but I was never able to contribute tangibly to any kind of positive change. Okay, Hallie, this sounds very familiar. Where have I heard this before? Well, it's probably that we all know what it's like to put forward your best effort, doing your best to create change, but seeing nothing come out of it. I mean, just think, how many times a week do you, you out there listening, feel like you're working so hard for something that has no real impact? So back to Courtney. 
Courtney took the first step and decided to leave her career talking about the problem and start her career doing something about the problem. Then she used her background in aquaculture, combined with new education, to plan and build a sustainable aquaponic farm. And how easy was that? Well, let's just let her explain that one. Uh, Since we're in the startup phase, the career change has been a bit intense. Uh, As any full-time upstart farmer know, or anyone who's starting a small business, starting a company takes a ton of work and you have to wear a lot of hats. Uh, But it's a bit like the difference between renting a house and owning one. Everything we do for the business is for us. And it's really rewarding to be working for ourselves. We often joke that we might be shoveling, but at least we're not shoveling for someone else. Uh, But mostly, it's really satisfying to know that we're going to be contributing to local food security and sustainable food production, and to have a company that's creating positive change in our community. Okay, so not really easy, but definitely motivated. It sounds like what she's getting at here is the idea of ownership. It's her farm, so she has to manage it and everything that goes with it. But she also gets the personal reward. Right. I mean, Courtney had a good career doing something fairly interesting, but when she became the owner of Blue Roots Farm, it gave her work a whole new meaning and her efforts some real impact. Was it worth it? You bet. Uh, There's lots of appealing things about starting Blue Roots Farm. It let me be part of a tangible solution to some really huge global problems, like adapting our food system to climate change and sustainably producing fish, both of which uh, let us contribute to local food security which is super important because we live on an island and everything arrives by ferry from the mainland. And there's some other pretty good perks too, like getting to start a business with one of my best friends, getting to have a say in how the company is operating and what our values are. And as a bonus, I don't have to work outside in the cold winter rain anymore. And I get to share amazing fresh food with people in my community. So Courtney's reason to start farming was that she felt like her existing job only allowed her to talk about the problems she wanted to fix, instead of actually doing something about them. Her first step in starting her farm was deciding that it was the right way for her to accomplish that goal, and that she was going to see it through. And then she used her background and some continued education, plus a bit of elbow grease, of course, to get it going. And as a result, she now has a satisfying career where she's using aquaponics to create sustainable change and provide good food to her community. And who knows, maybe next year you'll be doing the same, and we'll be writing about you. We sure hope so. So, speaking of sharing fresh food with your community, I have another story about how a farmer just like you decided to expand his career into farming. Okay, who is that? Gary Miller is the owner and lead farmer of Paradise Valley Greens. Like Courtney, he saw a problem and wanted to be able to do something about it. If you're interested in farming because you see issues in food and you want to become a champion of a better food system, then you're really going to relate to Gary. Like so many of us, Gary was unhappy with the quality and nutrition of food in his community. He saw this as a big problem, both for himself after a personal experience and also for his clients in the northern climate of Montana. I had the chance to talk with him recently, and he was interested in sharing his story. Here's what he said motivated him and his wife to start their farm. Well, I'm Gary Miller, and I'm a co-owner of the business along with my wife, Lisa Miller. I'm a physical therapist, and she's a speech therapist, and we both started Paradise Valley Greens, focusing on um, um, sustainable food production, primarily in the winter, using uh, aquaponics and uh, Bright Agrotex zip grow towers. My wife and I started Paradise Valley Greens to provide fresh local greens and herbs year-round, Uh, Being in the healthcare industry, we learned long ago that a lot of the disease and disability we see in our society and in in our patients is largely preventable. And usually it starts with good nutrition. Without good nutrition, it's hard to have the energy and the stamina to move and do the things you need to do to maintain your health and your function and live your life independently and and comfortably. So and uh, and we actually found that a lot of times the problem with with obtaining good food is that it's very hard to find, particularly in the winter months. So that's why we uh, we became passionate about about growing natural, safe, local food to make it easier for our community to make the right food choices, which gives them the proper nutrition and the energy to make the correct health choices, and that leads to a better lifestyle in general. We find. So as you hear Gary explain, as healthcare providers, he and his wife Lisa are well-versed in the impact of good, nutritious food on one's health. But advising people to eat healthy only goes so far if healthy food is nowhere to be found. Mm. 
So we can't tell someone to build different habits and then give them no tools to make it happen. Right, and the Millers knew that. They also realized that even if nutritious food types can be found, sometimes they're so unappealing that people don't eat them anyway. I mean, how many times have you been at the supermarket with the full intention of picking up some good, fresh veggies, but you can't find what you're looking for? Or if you can, it doesn't look appealing or safe to eat. You just end up not buying it at all or getting the canned version instead. Okay, so basically the three ideas that you're getting at here are access, expense, and trust. Am I translating that right? Right. So even if your healthcare provider tells you to eat more vegetables, like Gary and his wife do with their clients, you might never have the opportunity. And that's what Paradise Valley Greens set out to do. Gary explained how local food will impact the accessibility as well as expense in his community. But I wanted to know more about this issue of trust and safety and how his farm is going to have an impact on that issue. Here's what he said. I think one of the the problems with uh, especially greens and vegetables and, and herbs and healthy food in general is the distance it, it has to come, particularly in, in northern uh, states, northern climates. We don't know how far it came. We don't know where it came. We don't know the farming practices that they use. We don't know the impact or the inputs that they use on their farm. We're not sure exactly what's in the food. So I think there is a, a distrust in some of the food we get, uh, particularly because it comes from, from such long distances and there's so many unknowns. Having it grown locally where people get to know you, they know your face, we live in the community, we interact with them, we've helped them and worked with them before, I think builds a huge amount of trust. And I think people are much more likely to uh, seek out um, your product over anything else. So what did they do? Gary and his wife decided to start their farm in order to supplement and then ultimately replace their careers in healthcare. And now they're tackling this issue head on. They dedicated time to learning new farming and business skills and to diligently planning their operation within their means. I asked Gary what his top advice would be for aspiring farmers just starting out, and his answer really reflected his own experience. You're definitely going to want to hear this. So here's what he said. I would say the big thing is uh, planning, planning, planning. Familiarize with yourself with uh, not only the business ends of, of becoming a farmer, but also the biology ends of becoming a farmer. Farmer. It's a pretty steep learning curve if uh, your strength isn't in biology, chemistry, uh, environmental sciences, things like that. So be well well versed in those areas before you uh, leap into it, and also uh, realize that it's going to take some time. I mean this system of ours is based on aquaponics and it's taken a while just like i've learned from from bright echo tech and upstart university it takes a while for the chemistry and the biology to get right so don't commit yourself beyond your financial means to begin with know that it's going to take a while and be prepared financially to uh to uh take that time comfortably So Gary makes some really good points here, and as you heard him talk about that learning curve, that advice really shouldn't intimidate you, but rather remind you of why it's so smart to plan and learn on the front end. If you really want to get good at something, you spend time learning, right? I mean, when I was learning about creating ebooks and blogs, I listened to podcasts, I attended webinars, I read blogs, I found mentors, and farmers also need to find those educational and planning resources. Yep, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that shortly. So now, Gary and his family and his community have access to good food, and he and his wife get to have fulfilling careers producing it. Ultimately, the result of the Miller's approach to farming was better health for them and for their clients, more certainty and security about food, and less stress about finding it. And for you, it's a more satisfying career. And really, if you had the choice between packing your lunch with some subpar veggies from any old shelf at the supermarket and fresh local veggies from a farmer near you, which would you choose? Better yet, what if you were the one growing veggies? I mean, look at this produce we're showing here. That's some impressive stuff grown by yet another upstart farmer at Fable from Farm to Table. Farmers everywhere are contributing to a new food landscape just like Gary, and you could be the next. All right, it's time for our third and final story for the day. The third farmer is one that we got to meet a while ago. He runs an impressive farm. So if you're the type of person who sees an opportunity in the market and you're looking to take advantage of it, but do it in a way that lets you break out of the typical confines and struggles of farming, this story is for you. You'll be happy to know that it can be done. Thanks to some strong work ethic, motivation, and boldness of farmers like Matt Marsh, our next farmer story, Tons of aspiring farmers are successfully entering farming and doing it in a more efficient way. 
So Matt grew up on a family farm, and though he valued his experience, he made the decision to leave, and he found his passion in photography. Years later, he saw the changing times in the farming industry and witnessed long-standing farmland being gobbled up by urban development after older generations retired. After watching generations of their family struggle, many young people find farming to be an unappealing career and choose not to take it over. Sadly, this has the potential to end the family farm in many cases. As a result of this trend, Matt saw a massive gap in the market and an opportunity to enter it. He and his wife knew that they had to do something to make the most of the circumstances and do it differently than ever before. We asked Matt how his background in farming shaped his vision for farming now, and here's what he said. Uh, not to get too philosophical, but if anything, it taught me work ethic. Um, and, and the type of farming actually taught me that it was a lot of hard work. And I mean, look, my parent, my grandparents did okay, but um, I'm a little bit of a dreamer. And so um, it, it really taught me to appreciate hard work, planning, um, and all of those things that I guess, you know, come from like a homestead type um, environment, mm -hmm. um, but for a long time it actually pushed me away from farming because you know you see people at 60 who have bodies like they're 80, um, and they don't necessarily have a lot to show for it, uh, if that makes sense. And so um, it did give me a sense of appreciation. But whenever I found when I started to like really research it uh, in in the business aspect, um, it looked like. Um, the market was going to open up, and so if we could position ourselves right, uh, all of the old timers were going to move out of that, and then somebody had to kind of fill the void. And um, you know, we felt like it was a good thing whenever we found you guys and kind of had a new technology. So I'm probably going off on a rabbit uh, trail there, but um, it, it honestly just taught me more about work ethic and appreciating where my food came from and appreciating like those who uh, put in the work to create it. So my wife and I are photographers. Uh, we've, we've been professional photographers for a long time. Um, and we, we get the whole starving artist uh, friends or network, you know what I mean, where everybody's, mm -hmm. they just don't know how they have to do business, but they're good photographers. And right. that's what we didn't want to do. We didn't want to grow really good stuff but not be able to make money with it. Okay, so there's this tension going on, right? On one hand, he wants to enter the market and start his own farm. But on the other hand, he doesn't want to work it like the generations before him. Right. Matt knew that if he was going to return to farming, he had to find a way to make real money doing it and without it being such a grueling task. So after running the numbers and testing out aquaponics, he decided he could make a secure living with stable income and consistent production by growing basil aquaponically. Like Courtney and Gary, he found that growing without soil and in a covered structure, in this case a greenhouse, he could fine-tune his environment and production method, allowing him to grow really high-quality product more efficiently year-round, saving him on labor and other costs he might see in the field. This makes sense. I mean, he's taking advantage of an eager market. Right. Matt's a scrappy guy, and he really spent the time to dig into aquaponics, he spent hours in the greenhouse learning the system, and he created a long-term plan for his farm. His efforts have landed him the title of the basil guy in his community, which is an impressive feat. And that well-earned reputation has helped him line up sales in advance of even growing his product, which is many farmers' dream, believe me. And because of that, his story has inspired many other farmers to keep farming, but to find a better, happier, and more profitable way to do it. His willingness to think outside the box and his constant devotion to diligently thinking things through allowed him to make a career change that can profitably support his family, impact the farming industry as a whole, and hey, it even provides some great opportunities to use his photography skills, which we definitely love. By the way, if you have a chance, go check out his Instagram. His handle is at ahacres. If you've ever wondered if it's possible to make a good living in farming, his story should provide you with confidence that it absolutely can be done, and with much less of a struggle nowadays than ever before. When Matt started, along with nearly all the upstart farmers, he had very little experience in modern farming and was lacking confidence. We were so delighted to hear that we were able to help change that. Anything new is a little bit concerning, um, and it can kind of put you on your heels. And a conversation that I had actually in a roundtable with uh, Dr. Story was, he just said, these people are seriously just trying to get you down. He was like, your stuff's good, just sell it. And like that said, because I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I knew he did, it actually gave me a lot of confidence to go ahead and just start putting us out there. And um, it, like seriously, you guys have been extremely pivotal in us getting started. So we wouldn't have been as aggressive as we would have, or as we have been, without your help. So um, it's 
what you're doing is a good, good thing. Oh, I love hearing that and why I love this job so much, and I'm sure Amy here agrees. And just like we loved helping Matt, we can't wait to help you get your farm up and running. Okay, so to recap, we've heard from Courtney at Blue Roots Farm, Gary at Paradise Valley Greens, and from Matt Marsh at American Heartland Acres. Each of these farmers shared some insight with us from the personal experience they had starting up their farms. The motivations may have been different for all three farmers, but what they did to accomplish their goals were similar. They followed the three steps to becoming a farmer. Step one, decide. Courtney, Gary, and Matt all faced this pivotal moment. What was it? For Courtney, the day came when she finally grew so sick of talking about the problem, but not doing anything about it, she decided definitively to start her farm. After years of witnessing the struggles of access to nutrition in theirs and other communities, Gary and his wife decided that starting a farm was the best thing they could do as healthcare providers for themselves, their clients, and for their community. Matt came across an open market opportunity he just couldn't pass up, and so he too decided to start a farm, but to do it in a new, better way. And all three of them had that pivotal moment when they decided to start their farm. And so just like that, they checked off step number one. Now for you, that moment might be right now, or two weeks from now at three in the morning, or maybe even a year from now. And whatever that happens, when you finally decide to start your farm, you need to know the next step. All right, so with step one down, it's time to move on to step number two, learn. You have to get educated in farming and starting a business to be successful. Starting a business isn't something you just want to wing, at least not if you want to be in the business for very long. That's where we come in. So, this is the part of the webinar where we tell you how we can help, what our solution is, and why. And we hope you stick with us because we want to see you be successful, and we're confident that we can help make your farm a reality. But at the very least, you need to know this. Taking the time to do these next two steps, however it is that you do them, is key to starting your farm successfully without wasting valuable time or money. Okay, Hallie. So, say I'm an aspiring farmer working at... Let's just say I'm selling insurance. I have just decided that I am going to start my farm, but where do I go next? I mean, it's kind of overwhelming. I don't have any education or skills yet, and I'm not even sure where to do that. Our online farm training program, Upstart University, takes out all the guesswork of starting a farm and provides you with a simple path to get you from point zero to the finish line. Once you've decided you're going to become a farmer, you have two options. You can spend hours upon hours every day that I'm guessing you probably don't have crawling the web to find information that you think you need and then spend several more hours deciphering if it's accurate, useful, or relevant. And we have been there and done that and we know the pain. So instead, we just did it for you. So the other option then is that you can find and learn exactly what you need to know in just a matter of minutes with Upstart University's targeted and proven curriculum which means you can spend more time growing your plants, making progress on your business, or hiking, playing with your kids, whatever it is you love to do. So are you going to get the education to see it through and be successful? If yes, then join the over 850 other students in Upstart University. So Upstart University is an online training platform consisting of over 30 courses. Each course consists of lessons and lesson topics with videos, written content, and even audio versions of those. So Hallie, what are the options for joining Upstart University? If you do want to start your farming journey and begin the next step, the education, then we've got two great options for you. We have a monthly trial for $9.99. That's probably less than you spend on coffee each week. And an annual membership for $99 a year. Both of these great memberships give you full access to everything on Upstart University and any curriculum or features that will be added in the future of your membership. That includes a growing list of over 30 courses, a phase-by-phase -phase checklist for starting your farm, and a resource index of the most helpful books, links, and resources on farming. It also includes additional features like private tutoring and forums, exclusive discounts and first access to events, unbeatable support from the Upstart University staff, and a thriving online community of farmers just like you, where you can share stories and ideas, ask questions, and get help. But more importantly, this all boils down to you being more able to be the profitable, kick-butt, and passionate farmer that you want to be, faster and with, with less money, just like Courtney, Gary, and Matt. All right, so what kind of qualifications do I need to have if I'm going to join Upstart University? Do I need to know how to use online course? Do I need to have a degree in chemistry? Anything like that? 
Nope, no worries. Most of our students and farmers actually start out with no experience. You don't need to know how to do an online course, how to farm or run a business, be an expert at math or science, any of that. First thing in the program, we put you through an orientation course to show you exactly how to use and succeed with the program. From there, we teach you everything from the very early basics to the more complex subjects that are important later on, so it's appropriate for all backgrounds. We teach at about a 6th to 8th grade level, so as long as you can read, do some basic math, and have a little bit of science under your belt, plus a willingness to learn, you'll be just fine. Awesome. So, for the people who attended today... You mentioned a deal early in the webinar. What is it? Yes, thanks, Amy, for asking. We want to reward you for taking the time to listen to what we had to say today. So if you act now and make the decision to start learning with a monthly unlimited membership to Upstart University, we'll give you your first month for just a dollar. Seriously, just one dollar. And you'll receive the Five Secrets of Successful Hydroponic Farmers ebook free as a bonus when you use the coupon code Get Started. Okay, so that's Get Started. All one word, pretty simple. Here's how that will look. Go ahead and open up another tab and follow along with me if you can. You'll visit the site upstartuniversity.net, then click Memberships and Pricing in the upper menu. When you get to that page, select the monthly membership. Proceed to put in the required information as well as your coupon code, also making sure to select the option to create an account. Enter in your preferred password, and then finally proceed with payment. A great example of a student who has taken advantage of all of these resources is a woman named Anna. And Anna is uh, in Europe. She went through Upstart University courses, learned everything she could about hydroponics, and she decided that she wanted to start an organic hydroponic farm. Now, there was still a lot of planning to do on a very individual level, so she got in touch with us. Um, I have been Skyping with her and emailing with her and working through sourcing her materials for a couple months now. And right now, Anna is uh, trying out three different systems. She's trying out an or two organic systems with two different solutions and then a third non-organic system, trying out the ropes, learning how to approach her markets and manage her systems, and we hope to see her selling produce very soon. Okay, so we have covered step one, decide. Step two, learn, and that leaves us with the final step, which is plan. So you've heard Gary Miller explain how important it is to plan, and we saw how beneficial this step was to all three farmers. In fact, we've seen countless farmers through this step. It's easy to forget all the variables that might be important to plan. For example, understanding and projecting and tracking all your crops, production levels, planting cycles, customers, financials, and more is all crucial in setting up your farm to succeed in the long run. And when you get to this step, after learning what all is involved and how it all works, we have tons of great resources to make planning easy and to make sure you don't leave anything out. We use a combination of tools and personal guidance from the team to help you plan out your farm. And when it comes time, make sure and reach out to us to learn more about these resources. So, what do you say? Get out there, make the decision to start your farm, click the offer below, and turn that dream into a reality. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been Amy and Hallie here with Upstart University. We'll see you soon.